Welcome to the Midnight Engineers Project Log 6-12-2010. First, I just wanted to point out what we used to trim our yard for a number of years and the whole time wanting to do this solar lawnmower project. Of course, my friends laughed at me and said things like, you know, what are you going to do, strap a solar panel to your back and run around the yard? But of course, a uh, good Midnight Engineer has a better idea. The first thing we needed for our project was a cordless battery operated lawnmower such as this Black & Decker model or this Ryobi model. The Black & Decker model happens to be a 12 volt model the Ryobi is a 24 volt model. It just so happens that uh, we watch for these things at low cost at auctions, uh, Craigslist, uh, eBay if they're local, uh, and we happened to have picked this Black & Decker model up more recently along with this bicycle for four dollars at auction and uh, sold the bicycle off for twenty dollars so our project is already uh, sixteen dollars in the plus. One of the next items you're going to need is a solar panel. Now we have uh, several panels that we experiment with uh, different projects from time to time so what we're showing you here is uh, the one panel on the left uh, facing you uh, is a SolarX MSX60 model. Uh, this outputs uh, 12 volts at I believe 3.5 amps. And the one laying flat uh, is a MSX series. Uh, I don't know exactly what model we've picked this up on eBay probably uh, eight years ago. But it's about a 40 watt model. So the, uh, the current output on it is about 2.1 amps I believe as we use our panels for quite a bit of experimenting uh, we have our 40 watt panel hooked to a set of uh, alligator clips so that we can quickly uh, charge batteries uh, etc and uh, we've even set up a few formats uh, where <laughs> we can connect these up to uh, charge a battery internally which we're going to do in this project but you may want to use a good polarized plug that uh, will keep you from hooking uh, the plus to the minus uh, such as this common plug here. A quick check to the label and we find that yes this is in indeed a 12 volt model so we open the cover and discover one very large battery. Uh, so this is a 12 volt battery and since it does not specify on the battery anywhere uh, what size group this would be we're going to take a guess and say that it's between 20 and 30 amp hours. So we grab our handy multimeter and do a quick voltage check of the battery and we find it at 6 volts so there's a chance this battery might still be good. So we uh, grab our handy 40 watt uh, panel and uh, charge and apply that to the battery and recheck the voltage we find that voltage at nearly 19 volts which is pretty much the raw voltage of the panel therefore the battery is not really taking a charge and we can assume that the battery is probably shorted or uh, uh, defective in any case. As you can tell from the messes on my deck this Midnight Engineer is single but we scout around uh, the batteries that we have in storage for experimenting and we come up with a battery similar in size and a quick check there this is a 26 amp hour 12 volt battery now 26 amp hour if you don't understand that rating this would be uh, for instance uh, a unit could draw 26 amperes from the battery for a period of one hour of course that would be uh, possibly if you were only drawing 13 at battery should last two hours but uh, all give and take with all this I, I would think that we ought to expect something close to an hour uh, I would imagine that the the motor on this thing draws about 25 amps so uh, 26 amp hour is probably a good placement and guess what it fits so now after a quick check to the armature and brushes and the blades we're ready to put it back together and start cutting and believe it or not we actually got over an hour of uh, good cutting uh, in high wet grass. So uh, we're quite pleased with that. 
but now we've run out of battery so uh, we didn't get a charge controller or a charger pack with this so uh, we're going to improvise so looking at the rear of this black and decker model we find up close that there is a little pull tab where the charge controller would plug in and a charge indicator just a simple uh, red and green LED to indicate whether it's charging or it has been fully charged usually these built-in uh, charge controllers uh, after they take the the bulk of the uh, voltage to the battery they will revert back to a trickle charge usually something to the order of 100 milliamps which is a tenth of an amp just to uh, maintain the battery voltage so we follow the leads from where the external transformer pack plugged into the built-in uh, internal charge controller and we find where those leads attached into the circuit board and we're going to uh, make a hot wire jump from the back side of that circuit board uh, using a couple of uh, pre-made uh, uh, wire attachments and to a set of bolts that we're going to attach uh, out of the way on the top lever so that we can use uh, our style of alligator clips to uh, to jump the charge controller after making our uh, wire attachments to the charge controller board we make some temporary connections to uh, check our charge controller to see if it's functional and we see that the indicator light is red and a quick voltmeter to the battery while we're operating this way shows that we're charging uh, I'll give you some quick lessons on what to do if your charge controller happens to be defective at the end of the video since we did not use a polarized power connector for this application uh, we decided to install a blocking diode on the positive lead coming right at the circuit board at our wire attachment just in case we should hook the alligator clips in the wrong polarity to keep from burning out our charge controller board and you can see we have uh, attached our bolts from the eyelets on the wire to the side of the case where they don't have the potential to contact anything else inside and we'll be able to uh, grab those alligator leads from the bolt heads on the top so we put it all back together and ready to charge up but guess what we ran out of sun overcast skies actually you can still uh, somewhat trickle charge these batteries that's why it's good to uh, always be using some sort of automatic charge controller that will stop when they are uh, at full voltage full capacity so what to do if your charge controller was happened to have been uh, defective in the unit that you had picked up well there's a couple things you can do you can look for uh, charge controllers via eBay etc uh, this is a unit that I happened to pick up uh, probably in 2002 from a fellow selling them uh, work for the Department of Defense I guess or to design these for them uh, for a missile program these are a little overkill so a 12 amp charge controller a little too much for our battery usage uh, got it keep that size to the battery we really only want to feed that about two or three amps uh, this uh, something I picked up uh, maybe ten years ago and it's probably adequately sized it's uh, it's less than six amps uh, would be a great uh, charge controller for that uh, 40 watt panel I have another option you have is to take the solar panel and tie it directly to the battery uh, you have no regulation at that point of course now what we have pictured here is a, a panels that came with the Volkswagens you may commonly find these on eBay uh, these things here are 12 volt 300 milliamp hours and uh, if you use the regulator that came with that and parallel those uh, you could get uh, one two three four panels uh, going and, and have a charge of uh, a regulated charge of about an amp but uh, do not exceed about 5 to 8% of the battery capacity with your charge current. 